Hi everybody, this is Chris. And this is Matt. And this is Below the Root. What isn't it, Matt? It's definitely not a review. Not a review. We've never done a review of anything in our lives and we're not going to start today. No. So if you've come here looking for a review of Below the Root, keep moving. This is two assholes with opinions talking about a game they played for about a month, give or take, depending on how much they enjoyed it. How much did you yes. enjoy it, Matt? <laughs> well, that's a very complicated question with this game. Isn't it, though? <laughs> On the surface, I did not enjoy this game at all. Okay. Uh, but, and we should, we should like, talk about it, because it's, it's, it's a Wyndham's Classics game mm-hmm. from 1984, and, and they're known for taking beloved literature... Like Swiss Family Robinson, The Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, Treasure Island. I have that on a list over there. Oh, do you? Um, oh, my God. Yeah. You prepped? I prepped. Son uh, of a bitch. All right. I know. But they took these classic love ga- books and turned them into video games. Okay. And so this game is for people who have read this series of books. It is not for us. And... That's part of the reason I I didn't like it. And it's also significant for our conversation because to really understand what's going on in this game, we're going to have to talk about what the books are about and what's in the books. And so before we start, my recommendation is if you have any interest in this at all, uh, this kind of like weird, it's a trilogy of books. If you think you might ever want to read them, don't, Don't listen to this. Go read the books and then play this game. And then come back and enjoy our uh, shitty understanding of it. Let me also preface, since we're talking about that. These books are a late 1970s young adult fantasy, very political left of the spectrum. So if that's going to bother you too, bye. You can head out now because that's what this game is. (laughs) Yep. We're not going to talk about it a lot, but it's going to come up. So, Yeah. Uh, so when I say I didn't like this game, well, oh, let's talk spider. about the history. Let's talk, about the, oh, get, okay. <laughs> let's talk about the history before we get into it. Sure. All right. So it's 1984. It's Wyndham's Classics, which we talked about. It's based on a trilogy of books by Zilpha Keatley Snyder. Mm-hmm. Who wrote a bunch of stuff but this is one of her more famous uh series of books and although the game is called below the root which is the name of the first book in the trilogy this all takes place after the trilogy of books which is kind of interesting and probably not a great it's it's a great choice because it's a really good title and it's compelling but like from a clarity standpoint not the best so your problems with the title, not where it's taking place in the timeline. Because I was about to say, like, Witcher takes place after all the books. But it still is called The Witcher, which is very clear as to what it is. <laughs> right. Well, well the, the trilogy is not called the Below the Root trilogy. It's no. called the Green Sky yes. trilogy, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's named literally after the first book, but right. happens after it. And uh, the story about that is is kind of interesting too and this is like a huge spoiler for the books so uh, i spoiled them for myself in my effort to understand what the fuck i was doing with my time as i was playing this game but anyway at the very end of the books the main character gets into this kind of uh you know frodo baggins mount doom gotta throw in the ring situation and and fucking falls in the lake and and presumably dies and the children were devastated by this in the 70s and like wrote letters to the author and she was like what did i do i mean she, i i read that she felt like she had to do it for plot reasons which i i respect more than i respect making children feel good mm-hmm. so but to like kind of undo her deeds of misdoing she partnered with with dale disharoon and made this game 
where you're trying to go figure out what happened and find that character that fell into the lake. And that's this game. Okay. I thought it was because the light was dying. Because they keep telling me the light's dying. What's up with that? Because you know apparently more about the story than I do. Yeah, I think that's just because... Uh, what's the guy's name? The character's name? Uh, Ramo? Ramo? Ramo. Rambo. Ramo's like... Rambo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in my imagination, really what this game is, is exactly the plot of Misery, but you replace the <laughs> author of Misery with with uh, Zilpha Snyder, and and you replace uh, the nurse with Dale Disharoon. Oh, Dale Disharoon. I think that's, <laughs> that's the origin story. So Dale, Dale Disharoon forced uh, Zilpha Snyder to make this to to fix her book ending. Now, I, one of the things I like about Dale Disharoon, or as he came to be known, Disharoon, mm. uh, he changed his last name. Because his wife didn't like how it sounded and she wanted something more poetic. And I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah, I read an interview with him and he sounds like a lovely person. Unfortunately, he passed away, I think, he in did. 2008. Uh, but uh, Dale uh, Disharoon is most known for the Zelda CDI games. Yeah, I mean, not everybody can be a winner, right? <laughs> yeah, poor Dale. Poor Dale. Like, you back, you back the CDI and... You know? I read, like I read, I watched an interview with them where they were so excited to get to do those games. Because, like, we get to work on a Nintendo property without Nintendo. And then, like, got no backing, got no help. Had to, like, work another game into it to try and get it done in time. Like, I just... Oh. Yeah, it's a sad story. Yeah. CDI is an interesting platform. It is. Um like I was looking through his, his history and I found laser Lords for the CDI and I'm like, the game doesn't look great, but the name laser Lords. I'm like, I, that's the coolest thing ever. That's a great name. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. good stuff. So in our history, it came out for three platforms, C64, Apple II, and, uh, DOS. So it basically came out for two platforms, uh, Apple mm -hmm. II and C64, because the DOS is pure nightmare fuel if you ever get the chance to. It's hideous, which is a shame because this this is a C64 version, correct? Yes. It's lovely. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pretty blown away by how rich the environments were. And they're, like you can see there's furniture everywhere, and everything is kind of fully realized from an environment standpoint. Yep. Uh, and the sprites are fantastic. And that's where it pulls ahead of the Apple II. These sprites are really good. Mm -hmm. The animation's good. The the detail's good. Yeah. The Apple, it, it's not quite as good. It's still better than the DOS, but graphically. Yeah. Sound-wise, there's not much to it. No, there's a few little riffs. I, I, I like that. I liked mm -hmm. the sound overall, but yeah, it's pretty sparse. There's there's just not a lot. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. I mean, okay. One of the things I do feel about this is like, it looks good. It could look better. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it's very colorful. It's. It, it didn't lean into Commodore's 87 shades of brown. It definitely tried to use the other colors as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, in the demo, back a little bit, you saw a little spider walking around. I think those things are adorable. <laughs> They're really good. They're the, really the good. The sprites and the animation are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, since we're on the sprites and animation, I'm. how, how do we want to do this? I want to talk about the interface, but... We're doing character pick right now, so let's talk about that, I guess. Yeah, let, so one of the things I loved was that every one of these characters starts in a different place, and they all have a home. And and you end up back at the home uh, if you fuck up. Mm -hmm. But I really like that. And you can find other people's, all the other characters' homes in, in the game, which is great. And I like that it, they're all different statted. 
Yes. Yeah. There's like, there's two races, the Kindar and the Erdling. Mm -hmm. And in the books, they're like separated and the Erdling kind of, uh, were put underground because they wanted people to know that violence existed mm -hmm. and the kindar live in the trees and they kind of like put the erdlings underground uh and then told everyone that they were monsters so that's what the books are about are these two they're the same people but they've been separated and it's kind of the story of them being reunited and right shit and with very different political and social backgrounds and i feel like the side you're supposed to root for is the erdlings are up top right the erdlings are underground I okay believe. so the kindar i think you're supposed to root for them and like the erdlings are sort of people who are being brought back in because a couple people at the top of the kindar lied to them like they're good people they were misled by some leaders but yeah yeah like ultimately the, i think everyone is from another planet that i believe might be earth and and there is, there was like war and all kinds of bad shit and so they kind of decided no one's going to be allowed to feel any negative emotions anymore right. and so they like take these berries they like meditate so it's like there's so much potential there for like an interesting thematic ideas but it's just it's not in this game you know but what it is, is yeah, I, oh god, the way you just said it, you know what it is? It is literally the exact opposite. It's a mirror reflection of Starship Troopers. Wow. <laughs> right, because there's no violence in this thing. No violence. None this whole all. society is based on just meditating and, and being part and thinking about where you belong in this whole mix. There's no, you know, prove your way in. It's your... Of the, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's reverse Starship Troopers. It's reverse Starship Troopers. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everybody. It's, been... it's reverse Starship Troopers with fucking so much falling, it will make you want to claw your eyes out. That's this game. Uh, you're falling again. So, yeah. So, that's. So, and anyway, so when you Shuba choose a out. character. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I? I tore my shuba falling from the silk grund oh, the other day. It was not good. That, um, by the way, what the sentence you just said right there is my problem with the game. I tore my shuba falling from the silk grund. Everyone at home just went, "What?" <laughs> unless you've read the books. Unless, unless you've read you're the, books. the two or three people who suggested we play this. Yeah, I'm gonna pence to find out what I need to kinaport, and then I'm gonna use my grund speak. This is this is why I say this game is for people who have read the books and yes. we are not those people. We should not have played this without reading the books because there's a common a confluence of factors that make it not fun if you haven't read the books. One, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. The plot is very open. You have no historical background in anything that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, two the language just makes no sense at all you you like have to you, it's in the manual like you yes. can read it in, in the manual it's not like obfuscated from you but there's a lot of it and and like you can see in your menu there's pensing and groom speak and all kinds of stuff that you're just not going to know what it is and you're not going to know what a trencher beak is well uh, and it's stuff like lapins lapins are rabbits they could just say rabbits. They could. But I'm sure in the book, a lapin is actually something rabbit-like. Like, it's close, and it means something different. But if you're coming into this without that history, you're thinking to yourself, just say rabbits. Just say, uh, you know, telekinesis. Just say, you know, mm -hmm. uh, telepathy. Right. Right. But, but it's because it's that's not the game. That's the game is based on the books. It's not the lore. And, right. So all, all those things kind of work together to alienate you as a player of this game. Mm -hmm. a and uh, if 
if you've read this, I feel like you would come in and you would have that base understanding and you would know kind of the rules of the thing. And then when you get, get a Shuba, you'd be like, oh, I read about the Shuba. Like mm -hmm. I, I dreamed about flying from the tops of the Gruns with my Shuba and my, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it would be like great. And then you'd find the hero at the end that you like loved through the books and it would be this great experience. And if you haven't read it, you're just like, what the fuck is this? I'm just falling from trees for hours. It reminds me of the game Asheron's Call, which was my first time I noticed this. Asheron's Call didn't want any classical uh, fantasy monsters. No goblins, no dragons, no anything like that. It was all going to be newly created stuff. Mm -hmm. And in about 15 minutes of playing and reading whatever their crazy name was for something, I'm like, oh, it's a goblin. And immediately s just sort of stopped caring. I had no emotional connection to the game because I had no way to take my previous knowledge and hook into it. Mm -hmm. But to be clear, you're not advocating that they call them rabbits. No. Are, are you? No. Okay. Good. I, I, Good. I'm, I'm from a lore and story point, they absolutely should be that. But then you are going to have to accept that this is a narrower audience. And if you want to really enjoy this game, if you want to really get the full enjoyment out of it, you got to start with the books. Yep. It's canonical. The author was heavily involved in this, like mm -hmm. in, in the design and the writing in the plot. So yep. like th this is the fourth installment of this trilogy. Quadrilogy, I guess. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so that's key because, again, like, I didn't have fun doing it. Uh, but I don't want to say that it's bad because I don't... What we're missing is an emotional connection to the game. Right. That's what I was going to say. I had fun, but I never felt connected. I feel like if I could have gotten that connection, I would have been blown away by this game. But it wasn't there for me. Um, yeah. Like one of the things. Uh, one of the things I let's let me jump back here just like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to pause here. Because here. Boom. OK, first off, you play this game with the joystick. Mm -hmm. and about three minutes in I immediately went LucasArts eat your fucking heart out mm -hmm. this is what a good interface for this should look like I was thinking yep. of Maniac Mansion and how it's just unplayable with the joystick and this never got in my way and it hides when I'm not needing it and I it love knows that. it's based on your proximity mm -hmm. to whatever you're interacting with, not based on finding the thing on the screen the way the LucasArts games are. Right. So, like, it can be a little annoying when you're trying to speak to someone and they, like, keep walking away from you and you're not, like, facing them and right there. That's annoying. But still, the interface in that regard is really impressive. It's annoying, but it also... Shows an interactivity with the world. You got to get their attention first. You got to. Right. It's not impossible to do. It's not really, really hard to make happen, but it's. It, so I really like that. And I like how the menu, just everything always felt slick. I never really had a problem with anything. Um, mm -hmm. I liked. Like, I, I was talking about the pence before, where you're, like, psychically connecting with them. Mm -hmm. And that it's a skill you sort of upgrade over time. You might not even have it at the start of the game. You might not have enough spirit power to do it. But, like, you can just talk to somebody and get a message and get a clue and get things to happen. And as you upgrade your energy, okay, now you can read their emotions. You know, should I even approach them? Mm -hmm. And if you're within talking range and you talk to them, you psychically connect and get a second message from them. It's this great way of like clues, 
layer on each other and you feel like you're building a, a story through different ways of communicating with people. And I really liked that. I, what I loved the most about the pensing mechanic is you get a really huge variety of responses. It's not just they like you, they're mm -hmm. happy. It's like avarice, like they feel avarice or they, they feel kindly warmth. Like that's really specific. And I think those are the times where you can you can feel the presence of the the author in the game. Yeah. And, and I really liked that. I, I loved that. You can tell when you're talking to the people in here that it was written by an author and not just somebody doing game design. I want to go through yeah. like some of them like greed, listless calm. Right. Good one. I'm familiar with listless calm. Kindly warmth. Grudging interest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Those are great. Uh, resentment, compassion, goodwill, pride, uh, concern, sympathy. I mean, not all of them are as flowery, but some of the... Uh, where's the one that I really thought? Oh, here it was. Uh, the pride one. If you, When you get to the... You can actually like have a second message, like read their mm -hmm. mind a little bit. The quester admires my voice. <laughs> Do I nice. though? <laughs> yeah, you are the quester. That's great too. I really enjoyed that. Uh, so yeah, so like mechanically, that part is is great. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you interact with the world, and again, like the richness of the world. You're in these. There's like ten of these giant trees called grunds. Mm -hmm. And you explore them, you climb them, and uh, that should feel magical, and it should be really engaging. But again, the biggest problem I had with this is that the exploration is so clunky, and you fall. You fall on these tiny little gaps that might not even be gaps like you you don't sometimes you don't know till you're falling through them and that to me is just so annoying but i get why they did it too because in a game where there's no violence in a game where you can't be killed the worst thing that can happen to you is that you run out of time and energy and end up back in your mm -hmm. uh i forgot the name for the nid yeah uh and i think what that's, you yeah Go what do you second. do? I was going to say you, that you I fall. know Nid. Like, you you will eventually get it. Uh, mm -hmm. The world does start to open up to you eventually. But it just... Yeah, I mean... One of the disadvantages you have is you weren't a Commodore player. So, like, I'm looking at that little thing to the right where the little stick's coming out of it and going, that's a hole. Like, I know from, like, dozens of Commodore games, that's a hole. You're like, well, it's a brown part with the other brown part, so why can't I zip on that brown part, you know? That's that's one of the more obvious ones. There are some yeah. that are really small, or they look like little changes of altitude. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the game. Like, they have to have something in there. But you also move slow, and also the jumping mechanic, or, like, you have to, like, hold down on the stick and hit the button. Mm -hmm. So it's not like platformy it's like that piddly kind of out of this world jumping that requires accuracy more than knowledge and reflexes like you you have to do it just right so the exploration overall is quite slow and quite frustrating because it takes a while to get to the top of these things there's there's 500 screens in this game spread out across 10 grunts so uh, if you're a math whiz, you can figure out how many screens that is per grunt. That's a lot of screens to fall and have to go back through to get to the to where you were. And that can be quite frustrating. Yeah. I mean, some of the screens are like the inside screens like this. Um, true. I want to say it was like the outside is like 30 by 5 or 6. Mm-hmm. So it's about a sheet of graph paper wide and then a stack of like five or six high. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I find disappointing about how we played this game 
is I know how I would have played this game back in 1984. I wouldn't have mm-hmm. mapped, at least not at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I would have gotten to know my surroundings over weeks of playing and then probably put this game on a shelf and then popped it back open and did it again and did it again. And I probably would have beaten this game sometime in 1986, 1987. I yep. finally would have finished it after putzing around and experimenting and then finally getting frustrated enough one day to just dedicate myself to winning. Yep. Insane fanaticism. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa. So I'll just leave that asshole alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from, from an exploration standpoint, uh, it's it like they, they recommend that you take time to figure out where you're going to sleep, where you can get your food. And you're like building this picture of the world and mm-hmm. who the people are in it and who you have to watch out for, who has avarice and, you yeah. know, who has kindly warmth. Uh, and it's not, it's, you're not meant to like bomb through this sucker. It's because you're like living in this story, you know, but you can finish it in half an hour. You can, if you know what you're doing, you can plow through this thing in half an hour, but if you're going to explore and go through all the places and invest yourself in the world, which is what they want you to do. I, I think my initial assessment's correct because you're going to do that for a while and you're going to need a break and you're going to come back to it and you're going to need a break. Mm-hmm. And There is a timer, but it's quite generous. Like yeah. they, they definitely give you time to be in the world. And, mm-hmm. and I think also I get a sense that maybe they don't really expect you to beat it your first time playing it because again, the world's really open uh, and there are places that are really hard to get to. Mm-hmm. I don't understand when a timer is that generous. Like, uh, from what I'm understanding is you can beat it in four of their days if you rush it. And they give Mm -hmm. you 51. Mm -hmm. So when a timer is that generous, why have a timer? I'm not sure. Uh, I I guess, again, because there's no no other penalty. Mm Mm-hmm. So when you get when you get exhausted, you you have to feel you like you're, you you lost something. Yeah. You know, like like yeah. you have to feel that pressure, whether or not it's real or whether or not you know you're gonna right. uh, really care that much about getting through it in time. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the other thing you just said with it too. Like, there's a resting mechanic to get your energy and stuff back. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. I can handle that. There's an eating mechanic. We'll talk about that in a second. But the fact that there's a resting and an eating mechanic? Fuck you. Mm -hmm. For this kind of game? And also, like, you have to check it. You can see it's not on your screen. You don't know how you're doing unless you check it. And you end up checking it a lot. And also, you're in this this Silk building. Silk mm-hmm. is a strip club in Milwaukee, <laughs> so I was really let down. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, I had mixed up. feelings about it. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> let's go in here and just see what happens. Um, yeah, like if that was on the screen, that would have made it at least a little more tolerable. Like I could have gotten behind it a little more um yeah you really have to pay attention and some people will let you rest in their house and some people will give you food but like they only have three food and if you do it three days in a row you know you're done yeah the 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 other really like there's no violence and also people have to give you everything Mm -hmm. if they don't offer it you can't take it yeah so it's really this kind of like moral uh it again it's it's trying to teach a moral lesson it's got a definite political agenda um one of the other things they do is like if you're one of the kinna kinder who live above ground and have only eaten berries and have never done violence um and you eat meat all your stats take a hit also, 
there is a machete that you can use to kill people. I was going to say, you said there's no violence, but I read after we got done playing, like, oh, you, yes, there is. <laughs> you can, but... I'm going to go back and check that out. <laughs> yeah. Like, this this just got a little more interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go to the strip club and then murder everyone with a machete. <laughs> Grand Theft uh, Groomed. Groomed Theft Auto. <laughs> Groomed Theft Auto, there. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> You're walking it. Is this just the way the video is streaming to me uh, that you're walking no. animation? So every so often, my guy just got a burst of speed. It's like, I'm going to get there. And then just hustled. And then other times, not so much. And didn't animate. That's weird. I didn't have that issue with mine. My guy always just walked at the same plotting pace. Hmm. Yeah, I know, right? Interesting. Uh, so the way this is paced is potentially really, really good mm -hmm. because it, it has that, that thing that games do the, they call the Metrovania kind of thing. It's not quite that, but like you get new skills, you get new items and it opens up new areas of the map. It lets you deal with problems in different ways. And that's really good pacing. And like they kind of dump you in the middle of this thing with a, a real kind of nebulous problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you're like someone had a bad dream and that's pretty much what you get uh, when you start. So uh, you don't have a lot, but they do a pretty good job of pointing you at things. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the game, you're basically just trying to upgrade your spirit skill to the point that you can use new... Uh, abilities which is good which is a good mechanic and also like kind of before that you're picking up items and the items help you get new places so from like a pacing standpoint that's that's satisfying you're constantly the, the story doesn't move along can... yeah it, it would would have been nicer if the story like the story kind of moves along when you when you go find the kid in the garden mm -hmm. um or the hermit, or basically when or you, the there's hermit. like yeah. five places that sort of unlock more of your dream to see more. Five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and, you're like, you pent animals and get upgrades and... Yeah. That, that's, that's good from a pacing standpoint. But again, I got so bored trying to get back to the places that I had previously been because I fell. Mm -hmm. that uh that kind of broke what i felt could have been excellent pacing because suddenly i'm falling and speaking of falling there's places that you have to fall to mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's not a fast-paced thing no, it's far more along the lines of a King's Quest or something like that. It's not an action-y game. Um, and that's kind of why, because it's so slow-paced and you do so it walks so much, like, that was my fault. I should have stopped moving there. Um, mm -hmm. But you can learn, like, where you need to jump and what you need to do. And Like, I, I actually fell there on purpose, it looks like, because I wanted to go get this honey lamp, I think it's called. It looks like honey yeah. lamp. God, I actually learned stuff about this world. <laughs> yeah. I do I would be interested in in reading these books. Mm -hmm. Uh although I know the whole plot now because I I played this game and yeah, read all about it, but it sounds like it might be uh a, a good a good series, you know. Yeah. No, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to Oh, what's this house? I know I played this and I'm like, ooh, what I doing here? Probably nothing. Yeah. I gotta say, man, I thought it was a I thought it was a frustrating game mechanic though to uh to kidnap me, put me in a house, and my only recourse, if you don't have a trencher beak, is to hurl yourself into a thicket until you collapse. You can and like I got stuck in this with the same problem and didn't realize the way out. There is a command that lets you reset yourself back at your house you can select yeah. that and you just bloop, back to the house but yeah that's stupid you basically have to collapse and lose the day and then you end up back at the house uh 
it would have been far more interesting to have a way to escape getting kidnapped. Yeah. Just have, just like one, take, take five of the screens off. We don't need that many. Take five of them off. Take this screen off. This screen does not need to be here. (laughs) Well, the answer is to pence people before you talk to them. And Uh, like, don't, yeah. Don't talk to people who are shitty yeah. or like have negative mm-hmm. feelings about you. Peace to you, Pilgrim. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Howdy, Pilgrim. So, you know, ultimately, I didn't enjoy this, sadly. Ultimately, I did, but I don't feel an emotional connection to it i don't know if i'll go back and finish it because i haven't read the books uh one of the other ui things ux things i want to complain about is saving the game when you save the game if you're not using quick states Mm -hmm. you leave the game by going back to the main menu and then saving Mm-hmm. So it feels like, um, it's like a trust fall. Yeah, it feels like you're. It just feels wrong. I've left the game. I've stopped playing, and now I'm saving the game I just left. And that, well, yeah, that's that. It's it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I use save states mostly, but mm-hmm. th- that is true. Uh, there is no, ooh, mom, your poor head. And I would say like instructions, I wouldn't say you must use them because of the interface down below. You can kind of figure stuff out by trial and error, but I strongly recommend reading them because they give a little bit of a glossary. They, they're not very long. Mm-hmm. They help point you in the direction. They're good. Not the best, but they're good. Yeah, yeah, I had no beef with the with the manual. It doesn't give you a lot of of world building again because they, I think they assume that you're coming here from the books. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that we found out, or I found out just this morning, that I'm going to go back and I am going to go back and check this out. The Commodore 64 version has a level editor. Yeah, I read that in passing when I was poking around uh, articles about this thing. Like, I'm sorry we can't show you the level editor right now, but apparently there's a level editor for the Commodore 64 version. So if you're digging into this and you didn't know about the level editor either. You're welcome. You're welcome. There's also apparently a bug where you can where you can fall through the floor. And just fall forever? <laughs> well, or does if it you... Around? It, it'll crash the game if oh, okay. there's nothing under you, but the, you know, the under under the root below the root world uh, uh, is down there. So you can get there by exploiting whatever bug that was. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Oh, the food thing. I don't, did I mention this? Uh, Like, I think the reason they put the food in the game is also to help with that narrative where the kinder, like if they eat meat, it hurts their senses and stats and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, like, like this is the, I'm really torn with the wording because narratively lore wise to build a, a feel for the books, they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Someone coming into it blind who wants to learn more about this world and the video games their entry into it, it's a horrible job. Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about that before. Yeah. But, like, I think it all all comes back to uh, the author trying to appease all the people that that she alienated with the ending of the series. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the context for this game yeah and i think it it shows and if you don't have that context it's it's kind of confusing and you're just like well whatever right 
it's not this game is definitely not for people who haven't read the book i i keep saying that but it's i i really believe that that's true mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think it can help get you started but at some point you're gonna have to go back if you really want to enjoy this game you're gonna have to go back and enjoy the books uh pinnacle and pit what's your um i think i think the probably finding the kid in the garden for the first time and and pensing with him and getting the messages was was probably like okay the you know things are opening up now or maybe the first time i i upgraded my spirit juice with an animal mm -hmm. i was like okay i now I kind of have an idea. For one, it was a pain in the ass for me to find him. It's not hard. I just had a hard time finding him, mm -hmm. getting there. Uh, by the way, this did come with a map uh, that you should probably use. It's not complete. It, 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 if you Google it, you can find it. People have published really nicely done full maps. Oh, wow, they have. But I'd say start with the map that comes with it. Uh, but anyway, so I finally found the kid and I was like, okay, this, things are going to open up now. Like it's going to be, uh, I'm like in the game. And then the, the pit was just all the falling all the time. And, and like, if you're up at the top of a tree and you fall and you don't have it all in your head at once, you can fall for screens and screens and some of the screens are just black and it's just like you falling through the black screen and you're just like, Oh, I just spent like, you know, five minutes climbing this thing. And I undid it in, in a second because of the two or three pixel gap in this branch that looked like a step down. Mm -hmm. Like I could, I could see just like, if I were a kid, just being like so upset by the jumping in this game, because <laughs> I'm I'm like you're in really my salty 40s. about the jumping. I didn't find it that uh, bad, but man, you are really salty about the jumping. <laughs> I hated all the falling. I hated it. That's why I learned to get good at it, man. <laughs> oh, it's not about being good. That's the thing. <laughs> it's it's about being like pessimistic because everything that looks like maybe it's not exactly you know flat you should just assume you have to jump over mm -hmm. and and then just being like really observant and again the the jumping command requires a little finesse it's not yeah. just hitting a button uh well for me what i did and i think it was hit a button and push left like, I, I think you might have been trying to, like, push left and hit a button, which is definitely trickier. Or no, down is how you get to the menu. Right. I think you're right. Yeah. So you hit the button first, and as long as you're just holding the button, nothing happens. So you can take your time. You don't have to simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. But if, if you were doing it the other way because you thought... Because even with, like, even after, like, two days of playing this, I was still not entirely sure how I get through doors like I'd go to <laughs> I'd like push yeah. up and down and hit buttons. So I mean, I've seen you fall a bunch in this in just oh, this footage. So yeah. I I know that you fell oh, and yeah. felt what I felt at least a couple times. Yeah, it I think for a little bit and then I'm like, okay, calm it down. Figure it out. What what helped me was to follow not follow the advice of the manual and focus on exploring one of the trees at a time, but rather if I fall, just go to the next tree and and like walk up and get a sense of what's going on over there and see if you can find some shit to pens and like you know get another shuba. And this is what I said back at the beginning. What I would have liked is a year of playing this game. Okay, I fall. Mm -hmm. I don't have to climb back up and like really get a sense of where I am. I'm just gonna like, okay, if I fall here, this is this. Next time I'll make the jump, it'll be fine. I'm gonna end up back in there in five minutes when I run out of energy anyway. Who gives a crap? You know, just that mm -hmm. relaxed playthrough. I really, I've said it a zillion times to this. Us doing stuff in a month sometimes short changes the game. True. True. Uh, what was your your uh uh my pinnacle, same thing uh, my the first upgrade for me though was at the hermit 
Um, mm-hmm. Somehow I glitched past her mulberry bush or whatever the hell it is mm. and ended up in there and then couldn't get out. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. I got in here and that's must have been what's supposed to happen. And she's going to give me the tools to get out. No. <laughs> no, she is not. <laughs> nope. Uh, so that, but it was cool because there was a whole dream sequence and I suddenly had a new power and a whole mm-hmm. bunch of things happened and that felt really good. Uh, Pitt, uh, it's the same thing we've been harping on. I don't feel an emotional connection. Mm-hmm. I don't. And I, I always hoped I would. So uh, the pit is basically right now where we're done. And I never felt that. Mm-hmm. Me connecting with the game. It's a good game. I just didn't connect with. But like, that's what's so sad about about it. Because it's like Wyndham. That's what Wyndham Classics does. Is it lets you... It's like early, uh, that kind of early storytelling where they weren't, no one Mm -hmm. was sure what video games were going to be like. Yeah. And so they're like, hey, you know, you read Swiss Family Robinson. Now you can be in Swiss Family Robinson. And like that is a a great way to give someone an emotional connection because you know, you know, the people, you know, the stories. So I would I would say that I am unwilling to play any Wyndham Classics games unless I've read the book based on this. And I, I don't know how to read, so it's going to be really <laughs> difficult if we want to do any more of these. And they're not making new ones, so what you going to do? Uh, <laughs> yep. Like I was hoping there'd be audiobooks for this because that's how I get a lot of my stuff right now. I just I don't mm-hmm. necessarily have time to sit down and read read the same way I did. But while I'm making dinner or something else, have the book going. So. Yeah. No. Uh, they were talking about optioning a movie for this about ten years ago. Apparently, is either in development hell or fell through. Um, mm-hmm. I Avatar think if you're came a fan out. of the books and you know the books, you should play this game. I think it would be right up your alley. If you're not, maybe miss this one. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Or read the book and then play it. Or read the book. I, and I then feel. Play it. I feel like. Based on what I know of the books and the author, I feel like I could say it's it's probably like going to be a, a pretty good mm-hmm. read. I think we'd like, like it. it. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, I think we I think we'd like it. I'd like to feel like I want to glide on my shuba between the groons. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just don't tear your shuba. Just don't tear your shuba. It's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing walking around with a torn shuba. Mm-hmm. You fall on your trencher beak. You fall on your trencher. Ouch! Beak. You spill your honey lamp. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you're just stuck with all the wisenberries. Yeah, wisenberries get you high in the lore of this. Mm-hmm. They're like a sedative. That's cool. And like, there's so much interesting thematic stuff again. That's probably in in that they couldn't put in the game. Right. Uh, that you probably because get more like, enjoyment out of. Yeah. yeah. Well, and here's the thing. Like, we've said, like, we didn't get it. We have talked a ton about the lore of this game (laughs) and used it all correctly. And, you know, so on one hand, yeah, I I never felt a connection. On the other hand, I know a ton about these books, and it's made me at least look for them in audiobook form and other stuff. And, Mm -hmm. And I can see back in the day, this when the books were available it probably got some people into the series. Yeah, totally. All right. Anything else? No, I think I'm done. All right. All right. Let's transition to our short game then. Mule. M-U-L-E. Do you know what Mule stands for? Uh, Not off the You don't. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for our next exciting episode where we'll tell you maybe what Mule stands for if we remember i yeah uh, i'll probably oh what's that. going on what oh. happened oh you just i think you resized my window i did because okay. i was trying to see if those little blurbles there said what mule was and i was gonna be like ha mm-hmm. it says it on the cover but it, it doesn't it's, it doesn't, it doesn't anyway matter. so we're gonna play we're i think i think we should spend half an hour trying to sync up on the multiplayer mule game i it's such a fun multiplayer game that we got to figure that out Okay. Uh, next big game. Are you uh, ready? Are you ready? Because here's here's the preface to this. 
Uh, next month, we will have been doing the show for five years. Five fucking years. Five. Five Count them. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, as sort of a little reward to ourselves and a way to just kind of see how things go, we're going to play XCOM, the first game we did on this again. Yes. And, and it will be fun to go back and watch the original and the new one and see how our uh, production values have not increased at all. <laughs> There's a border now, and I that's try true. to keep us out of the frame that's of the true. game. And that's true. I actually, I'm, I'm actually going to be very fascinated in what the change in is of, uh, us talking about it. I'm not going to watch the first one before we do this next one, but I am going to watch <laughs> it afterwards and just kind of back to back see. Right. What, what what is this? What how did we, how, how have we weird. changed over five years? Because I'm betting it's oh, going God. to be fascinating. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to play a lot of XCOM this month, and I'm really happy. Me too. Play. I love XCOM. Yeah. Obviously, it's the first game we talked about. Yeah. There's a reason we picked it first. Yep. Um. So yeah, XCOM next month. Let's watch uh, it. Yeah. Pull the pin and send in the rookie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. You think we'll like it, Matt? <laughs> I think we. I think we might enjoy XCOM. I think we might enjoy XCOM. Awesome. UFO defense. Yep. All right. Um, and then next Thursday, Knox. We'll do some more Knox. Knox episode five, I think. I think so. Uh, sometime us? around our thousand subscribers, a little bit after that. We're going to try and set up a full day of a Knox Marathon. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Otherwise, next Thursday, a couple hours. Yeah. Join us. Join us. All right. Anything else? I think that's nope. it. Thanks, that's everyone. To say. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you all next time. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.